Hey friends. So I already went live today on my Facebook about why I do beauty counter and why I consult with this company. Um, and I've actually been with the company for almost two years. Um, I was with them actually in 2015 and I stopped consulting and I came back because I'm so passionate about it. Um, and you know, along the way and over the years, I've done lots of like MLM and just little things. Like I've always been grinding. Um, most of my life I've had multiple jobs, almost my adult life. Um, I'm just always like trying to figure it out. Um, and sometimes it's been, you know, a success and sometimes it's definitely not. <clears throat> and so I think that's part of why I didn't really like I don't know, address like why I'm doing beauty counter. Um, I just kind of felt like a loser, honestly, because I've had quite a few experiences of um, either selling something or promoting something, um, either as an ambassador or whatever, and it just didn't click. And this does. So I'm gonna go back, let's see, I'm gonna try to do this as fast as I can, but it's really important to me. When I went live on my Facebook, I started like crying. <laughs> Cause it just is so meaningful. Um, okay. So when I was 15, I had a spinal fusion, um, in my low back. So I have titanium rod and screws and a wedge. Um, and so the problem with that is, um, titanium is not a natural material for our bodies. Um, soon after I developed, uh, hypothyroidism, I actually wasn't diagnosed with Hashimoto's till way later. Um, but I was always told that I would just always be on thyroid medication. There's nothing I could do. I just have an underactive thyroid, um, as if there's no reason for that. And, um, I mean, we know that there's so many root causes to, um, underactive thyroid, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, um, Graves disease, etc. So, um, but it just never felt right and never sat right with me. And so I remember, um, when I was maybe 23, I asked my doctor if I could go off my medication. I just wanted to try cause I was like, well, maybe I don't need it. And, um, I definitely did need it. I got, um, a lot of symptoms back, gained a ton of weight, was really, really exhausted. Um, and she was very skeptical that it was going to do anything. Um, like she just thought I needed it. Um, anyway, so along this journey, so when I was 23, that's when I really learned more about clean eating. That's when I was um, introduced to CrossFit and to the paleo lifestyle and I went gluten-free, dairy-free. Um, and I really like committed to that paleo lifestyle because I learned that it was important what we put in our bodies. And, um, I ended up getting introduced to, um, essential oils not long after that. And like why it's important to use less toxic ingredients, um, for like laundry detergent and kitchen soap and, um, things of that nature, why it's important not to put uh, harmful chemicals on our hair. Um, so actually my best friend introduced me to essential oils. Like, oh, this is a long time ago, maybe like 2013. Um, and during my quest to learn about paleo, um, I actually learned to cook and I started following different podcasts. Um, social media wasn't like as big of a deal as it is now, but I learned so much on podcasts about autoimmune thyroiditis. And that is a, an autoimmune attack on the thyroid gland. And I learned that that's way more common than just a sluggish thyroid gland. And so, um, I went to my doctor and I asked if he would order the antibodies so I could know for sure. And he said, no, because no matter what, it was going to be treated the same way. And so, um, I just felt defeated. Um, I personally haven't had a very positive experience, um, with the Western medical system. I know there are really awesome doctors and there is a time and a place for medication. I mean, I'm on medication for my thyroid now. Um, but I just haven't had a very good experience. I've definitely had to learn to be my own health advocate and get educated. Um, Pinterest was my best friend <laughs> podcast and eventually, um, obviously you guys know I went to chiropractic school um, where we learned a ton about human physiology, advanced nutrition, um, 
like the detoxification pathways this is really interesting um so um yeah so from i have notes because i was like i don't know how to stay on track um so i started making a lot of changes so not only with my diet um i kind of dabbled with essential oils i never was super um in not into it but like i i mean i still have some now but i don't know a ton about oils um but i did start using for example i started using oils instead of um telenol or ibuprofen with menstrual cramps things of that nature so just doing every little thing that i could to clean up what i was putting in my body and i started learning it was important what i put on my body so i started making my own body wash making my own shampoo Oh, when was this? Probably like 2013. Um, I'm sure there were options. There were just, there weren't as many options. Um, but, uh, I made my own dishwashing soap. Um, what else did I do? I, I was like making everything that I could. And as a single young professional, I had time to do that. Um, now I could not fathom that. Um, and still only being responsible for myself, a cat and a baby that's about to come <laughs> Um, but it just feels like life is just so fast though, you know? Um, so I actually was introduced to beauty counter the first time when I lived in Virginia and I joined as a consultant for about a year, but I just didn't really know what my why was yet. And it was hard for me to like hang on and do it because, um, when you're doing something different, most people don't agree or they say things about it or they're just not on board and I was easily defeated by not having as much support as I would have hoped um I mean I was young and insecure so I quit um so let's see I eventually went to chiropractic school when I was almost 29 that's when I really like dug in deep about autoimmune thyroiditis and I ended up asking one of my teachers if he could order labs for me and he agreed and that is when I actually finally got the diagnosis. I was 29 years old. I'd already had um, thyroid issues for 13 years, unanswered of what exactly it was or what I could do differently. And so, and you know, the issue with thyroid is it affects when your hormones are not like functioning well, um, it affects everything. Um, it affects other hormones. Um, there's a positive and negative feedback loop with hormones. Um, it affects mood, it affects weight. It affects, it affected my confidence. Um, I think the fact that I struggled with my weight was part of why I developed an eating disorder when I was 19. I mean, it affected so much. Like I was lethargic a lot. Um, it just really, <sighs> It, it lessened my quality of life. And so um, I was diagnosed and I really started diving into like, what could my root causes be? Um, so many different root causes from mold exposure to stress, traumas, um, emotional or physical. Um, it can be uh, metal toxicity, chemical toxicities, um, which goes back to those detoxification pathways. Um, they're oh leaky gut um so that's like when you have um hyper permeability of the gut lining and food particles get out and that is a root cause for most or if not all autoimmune conditions um so i just kept cleaning up my life and what kept coming back to me was um, I should do beauty counter. I should be, I mean, I was a customer at that point. I was still purchasing. Um, but I really just became so passionate about it because for a couple of reasons, like I had to be my own health advocate to even find out I had Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Secondly, when I was married, um, that was a very like toxic, stressful situation. And I actually ended up developing lupus and I had several of the, uh, symptoms and at that point, I, I wasn't licensed yet. So I had to basically demand that test as well and was diagnosed with lupus. And um, for me, it was empowering to have a diagnosis because then I could figure out like, what do I need to do to feel better? I didn't want to just be a victim to the symptoms and a victim to the pain and the discomfort. Um, so I had to like push hard to get those, those tests ordered so I could figure out like, what the is wrong with me? Like, why am I, was I 31, 31 and severe joint pain, just like so sick. I was so sick. You guys, like I didn't have any social life. I was so sick. Um, but like I said, there's lots of root causes. 
So one thing that I love about Beauty Counter is um, I am so confident that what I'm putting on my body, shampoo, conditioner, my skincare, my makeup, um, oils for the baby, um, all of her body wash, um, everything that we're putting on our skin, I know is clean and is not going to harm either of us. Um, so that's just going to support like my healing process and then keeping her healthy. Uh, I was just listening to, um, an audiobook about pregnancy and, um, it's common for there to be over 200 different chemicals in umbilical cord blood, which means that came from the mom and it's getting into the baby. Um, so every little thing that I can do to keep my kids safe is important to me. Um, and beauty counter it's just a different atmosphere, a different culture, a different like environment to be a part of it. Um, there are over 1400, maybe even almost 1500 ingredients that are banned in Europe right now. And there, there are a fraction of those banned in the United States. I can't, I have pregnancy brain. I can't remember the number right now because there are more banned. Uh, Beauty counter has been around for eight years now. This is our eighth uh, anniversary month. Um, I can't remember the number though. I'm a little embarrassed. Um, but literally like, it's like 30 something or 19. I, I don't know. It's like ridiculous. Um, I'll, <laughs> when I post this video, I'm going to post the actual numbers cause I'm having like a total, uh, like estrogen overload in my brain. Um, and I cannot remember <laughs> if you've um, been pregnant before, you know, this is kind of hard. Um, okay. So there are so many ingredients that are banned in Europe and in the United States um, prior to Beauty Counter. There actually were no new laws regulating our personal care products since 1938. 1938. I can remember that number. <laughs> um, but that's like ridiculous. So the things that are in our um, personal care products, including like deodorant, mouthwash, um, toothpaste, anything you put on our skin... Uh, they're known carcinogens. They're known toxins. Carcinogen meaning cancer-causing agent. Um, they're known hormone disruptors. When we disrupt the hormones, we're effing up all of our systems. So, okay, for example, um, obesity is a pandemic, excuse me, epidemic in the United States. So, insulin is a hormone. Um, the leptin and ghrelin are hormones. Um that affect like your hunger signals cortisol your stress is a hormone so when these chemicals are in your body and they're disrupting your hormones your hormone like signals and the way that your hormones um communicate with each other and the levels of the hormones you're jacking up your whole body um does it make sense that we wouldn't want that crap on our on our skin and getting into our bodies um, there are so many contributing factors like in, in that example of obesity, it's so much more than move more, eat less. It's so much more than that. Um, anyway, so that, well, and that's actually why like when, um, a lot of people go like hundred percent organic, they lose a ton of weight because they're taking out the pesticides and the crap that's been in our foods, the antibiotics and our meat products. They're eliminating that out of their bodies and they're able to lose that weight. Um, the fat just falls off. I digress. So <laughs> I really am passionate about this. Um, so for my own healing process, beauty counter has been like a cornerstone literally because I'm so confident I can open up the app. I can order what I need. I know that it's safe and clean. It's high performing. It's so high performing. Like, like this lip gloss, for example, I wasn't going to show you this. This stuff is awesome. It stays on a really long time. Um, and it smells good. Um, so <clears throat> It's just so easy. Like I don't have to make all my own stuff anymore. Um, and I can have high performing beauty products and skincare, anti-aging regimens, um, and know that it's safe for myself. It's safe to use while pregnant. It's safe while breastfeeding. Um, and it's, it's just supporting my healing process um, to reverse the Hashimoto's and lupus. So 
Um, for me, having chronic illness, it was so important to be a part of this company. And there's just so much that we need to educate each other on because um, it, we, we, we would think that you could just go to Target and it's safe to buy whatever's on the shelf. Maybe this notification to go away. Um, and it's not. And that's really shitty. And so anyway, um, I'm passionate about this company. I'm passionate about the products. Um, I love them, like love. And I've slowly transitioned. I didn't just throw everything out and buy all beauty counter. Like it's an investment. Um, so if you have any questions, if you want to know anything more about beauty counter, whether you have chronic illness or not, um, this really is for all of us. Um, and there's a men's line too. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys. I know this is getting kind of long and I wanted to keep it below 15 minutes. Um, but I love this company. I love these products and I have samples I can send you if you want some. Um, send me a message though if you're interested in like knowing more about why it's important to clean up the products that you use um, for yourself and for your family. Okay guys, have a good day.